Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we'll learn about HTML. So let's get this started. All right. So first things first, what is HTML? So HTML is an abbreviation for Hypertext Markup Language. So what it essentially means is that it's not a programming language. Instead, it's a markup language, meaning that using this, we can create a markup or a skeletal structure which defines our website. So let's now see how we can actually do that. And a quick note before moving further, this video is actually part of the front end web development series that we have going on on YouTube. And if you haven't seen the previous videos, then I highly suggest you to do that. And once you're done with that, then you can carry on from here. All right. So I have opened a blank project inside my VS code and inside this, let's create a file. So I'm going to name the file as, so it's going to be index.html. And as you can see here, we have given the extension as .html and that is because this file is going to contain the data which is going to be HTML. So you can give whatever you want for the name of the file. Like let's say I can give the name as packetcode.html and that's going to work just fine. But the main reason why we've given it as index.html is because whenever you open this particular website in the browser, then the browser will automatically search for the index page present inside our project, meaning that this index.html is generally going to be the root page or the home page. Even though you can name your home page whatever you want, it is best practice to always name your home page or your root page as index.html because that is what is being searched by the browser whenever a website is being opened. So remember to name it like that. So now let's close this off and inside this index.html, let's start coding. So the first thing that we have to do is that we're going to generate some boilerplate code. And the way that we can do that in VS code is by typing in an exclamation mark and clicking on tab. Then automatically the boilerplate template will be order filled. So this is the basic structure that each and every HTML file follows. And the main thing to note here is that every HTML file starts with a doc type HTML, meaning that this particular document is of type HTML and specifically it's going to be HTML5. If it was HTML4 or something else, then the line would have been different. But for HTML5, it's going to be represented like this. Okay. So in order to understand what's going on here, you need to first understand the fact that everything inside of HTML is enclosed inside of tags. So we generally have an opening tag and we also have a closing tag. So this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag. So whatever you type in inside of this will become the name of the particular tag. Like let's say this is going to be a HTML tag and whatever data is present inside the space is going to be considered to be HTML content. Like let's say this whole line is going to be considered as HTML data. And if you observe here, we have that HTML starting tag here and we also have the HTML closing tag here. And inside this HTML tag, we have two main sections. The first one is the head section and the second one is the body section. And whatever data is present inside this head section is not visible to the front end user. And this data is specifically used by search engines and the browser to understand what's present inside the website. So whatever data you want to showcase to the user, you have to type that data inside the body. Like let's say I can type in, hi, this is Kamal. So now let's save that. And in order to actually see the output, there are two ways that we can approach this. The first way is to actually open the file explorer and go to the location where this particular file is present, like this index.html file that we have here, right? So let's right click on that and open that using the Firefox browser. And as you can see here, we have the output, hi, this is Kamal. So let's say I'm going to change the data and give it as, let's say, Teja and let's save that and go to the browser and refresh. Then as you can see here, the data has been modified and it's going to say, hi, this is Teja. So all of this is well and good, but the main problem is that whenever you make any change inside your HTML page, you have to save that change and go to the browser and refresh the browser to see those changes. And this becomes a tedious task in the long run. So in order to automate this, what we can do is that we can open this particular file inside a dummy server. And the way that we can do that is let's go back to the VS code and inside the extensions panel, install an extension called as live server. So you can search for live server at the top and that's going to give you the live server. So if you haven't installed this previously, then you're going to have an install button here. Just click on that and that will be installed. Once you have that installed, let's go back to the index page and let's place this on the left hand side and let's place this on the right hand side. And now let's open this using the live server. So right click anywhere inside your file and you can just go to open with live server. Just click on that and that's going to be opened in a dummy server. So as you can see here, we have the data, right? So now let's make a change and let's save that. And as you can see here, automatically the page has been refreshed. So the main thing that we have to understand here, as I previously mentioned, is that everything inside of HTML is present inside of tags. So we cannot output the data directly like this. Instead, let's say you want to type in a heading. Then the way that you can do that 
Thus, we can type in a heading tag. So we have a heading tag which is going to be represented as h1. So we're going to have an opening tag and we're also going to have a closing tag which is going to be slash h1. So inside this, we can type in this is a heading. So let's save that and we're going to have a heading. So similar to h1, we also have h2, h3 and it goes on till h6. So it starts from h1 and goes on till h6 where h1 is the largest heading and h6 is the smallest heading. So let me show that to you as well. So we're going to change the number at the starting tag and also at the closing tag. So let's save that and as you can see here, we have the heading h1 and you also have all the remaining headings till h6. So if you compare this to a normal newspaper, what we generally have inside a newspaper are headings, paragraphs, images and links, right? So similar to headings, we also have what are known as paragraphs. And the way that we can create a paragraph is that we can type in a P tag and we can also close that with a closing P tag. And whatever data is present inside this P tag will become a paragraph. This is a paragraph. As you can see here, the styling for this paragraph is different compared to a heading. And one more thing is that you don't need to type in the opening and closing tag each and every time. You can just directly type in P and click on tab and that's going to be autofilled. Similarly, you can type in H1, click on tab and that's going to be autofilled. So whatever tag you want, you can just type in the name of that tag and click on tab and that's going to be autofilled inside of VS Code. So let's remove these remaining headings and let's type in the paragraph directly below this heading. And also let's change the data present inside these two tags as well. So there's one more neat thing about VS Code and that is that you can generate dummy data directly inside of VS Code. Like you can just type in lorem and click on tab and that is going to generate some dummy content. And if I say that, then we have the dummy data output on the screen. And if you want, you can actually increase the number of characters which are displayed as well. Like let's say I can type in lorem, then give 100 and click on tab. And that's going to generate 100 characters of dummy data. So apart from headings and paragraphs, we also have links. And the way that we can generate a link is by typing in A and click on tab and that's going to generate the anchor tag, which is a link. So it's not given as link, it is given as A, which stands for anchor tag. So let's say I can type in as click me and that is going to be a link. But the main problem is that if we want this link to go somewhere, then we have to give where that particular link has to redirect as well. So let's say I want to go to google.com. And if I click on this, it has to go to google.com. But the problem is that we cannot click on this. So if we want to click on this and make it go to another page, what we have to do is that we have to give an attribute to this. So inside the opening A tag, I'm going to type in href, then equate that to a quotations. And inside the quotations, I'm going to give the link to where this particular click me has to redirect. Like let's say I'm going to type in Google. And if I save that, so as you can see here, a different type of styling has been applied to this. So now if I click on this, then automatically it's going to go to google.com. So these are attributes which are associated with some of the tags that we have inside of HTML. So for this anchor tag, we have an href attribute, which is hyperlink reference, meaning that it's going to have the location of where we have to redirect whenever click me has been clicked. Similarly, one more attribute that we generally have is that whenever we click on this click me, it's going to open that page that is google.com inside the same tab. But instead, let's say I want to open that inside a new tab, like let's say like this here. Then the way that we can achieve that is by typing in an attribute called as target and equate that to underscore blank. So it's going to open this page inside a blank tab. Okay, so that's what it represents. So similar to a link, we also have an image tag. And the way that we can output an image tag is by typing img and click on tab and that's going to generate the image tag. So one thing that you have to observe here is that all of the tags that we've seen till now have an opening tag and also have a closing tag. But this image tag doesn't have a closing tag. And that is because all the tags that you've seen here before had some data enclosed between these two tags, whereas an image doesn't have anything like that. Instead, it only has a location of where the image is present. Like, let's say I'm going to open a new image here. So let's take this image. I'm going to open this and right click on this and copy the image link. And I'm going to paste that inside the source attribute for the image tag. If I paste it here and save that and go to the browser, as you can see here, we have the image. So let me zoom out. All right. So as you can see here, we have the image. 
So inside the source attribute, we can give out the location of where this image is currently present. And since this image is present online inside a website, we have given the address of that particular image. But let's say we have an image inside a local directory. Then the way that we can output that is that let's say I have an image here called as doc.jpg inside the same directory as of index.html. So I can go to index.html and inside the source attribute, I can give in doc.html, not html, sorry, it's going to be jpg and let's save that and that image is going to be outputted on the screen and if i have this inside a folder like let's say images like let's say i have this dog instead of this then i have to give in a dot slash images and inside of that we have the dog so if i save that it's going to output the image similarly you can get any image that you want from online or offline and show that using this image tag so apart from the SRC, we also have an attribute called as alt, which is alternative title, meaning that whatever is present or typed inside of this is going to define the particular image. Like for example, for this image, it's going to be this is a dog. If I save that, so what happens is that whenever there is no internet connection and this image is not being loaded, then instead of showing that image is unavailable, it's going to show that this is an image of a dog. So these are the four main tags that we generally see inside of HTML website. So apart from this, we also have some text formatting tags. Like let's say I want to make this particular word bold. Then the way that we can do that is by typing in a B, then click on tab and that's going to generate a B tag, which represents a bold text. So let me cut that and paste it here and let's save that. And as you can see here, we have the text as bold. Similarly, I can type in I to represent italic and that's going to be italic. So apart from these four tags, we also have some other important tags as well. And we're going to see those remaining tags in the upcoming videos. And one more thing is that we also have comments instead of HTML. And the way that we can do that is by typing in this particular syntax. And instead of this, you can type in the comment. Alright, so before closing this off, I just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with Packet Prep. So Packet Prep is a training and placement company located in Hyderabad. And these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now. And that is the full stack Java developer program. So apart from these free video lectures, they also have some premium content as well, like lecture notes, practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts. And they also have offline as well as online classes for this program. And they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well. So you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as the training approach firsthand. So if you're interested, I provided the website link in the description down below. You can go there and check them out. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.